covering this up because you don't want to look at my action figure injury this whole video. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, we're taking a look at the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi Marvel Avengers War Machine. This has been out for a little bit, but there's always something a little bit intimidating about a new Amazing Yamaguchi release. One, the Revel Tech joints, ooh, they can be a little bit frustrating. But with a figure like War Machine, where we've seen all the accessories and everything this guy comes with, I mean, there is an array of extras here. And it's the same thing we saw with Iron Man. A crazy amount of extras just going through all those is like oh God. trying to find places to plug them in and messing with rebel tech joints on top of that looking at the package well here with these releases this is half the fun it's just a crazy amount of graphics that they stick all over the packaging on the front we have a promotional shot but it's backed with all this debris and comic book art in the window we see the figure itself a couple of the extras but we know there's a whole lot of stuff lurking back here. On the side, another promotional shot looking freaking amazing. Have more comic art behind that. On the back, it's almost too much. It's a sensory overload. All kinds of promotional pics smashed together. And then they always throw in crazy quotes, but here it's, it's not so crazy, I guess. I wouldn't do that. I am James Rhodes. Freeze. This is strictly quantity over quality. Whoosh. Then it shows all the extras down here. On the other side, the usual fight night graphic. On the top, a nice comic picture of War Machine. Same thing on the bottom, along with Iron Man. There's Vision hovering in the background. Warnings, legalese, you're winning lottery numbers, UPC, but... Let's open this bad boy and see what's all stuffed in here. As usual, there's art on the inside flaps, a nice picture of War Machine, and then Rhodey down here. Ooh, very dynamic picture of War Machine on this end. Then down here, pretty badass picture. And this should be, yep, slotted out from behind. We get a lot with these figures, but an added poster or something you can hang up or backdrop, it's, it's kind of cool. Then this should be a nightmare. Double trays. Oh, I like how that's all separated out. Here's the instructions. Swapping out the hand plugging in the blasts. Why does this seem complicated as all hell? Plugging the blasts in, plugging the guns in. There's stuff that goes on the guns. There's stuff that goes on the arms. There's the rockets. Oh, and we got a tool. There's the tool right there in a little Ziploc bag. Extra joints and then plugs of some kind. Why do I feel like I'm about to build a model kit? Hell, getting the figure out of the package, there's already weapons plugged to the back of the arms. We got the plastic protectors between them. I guess this piece unplugs too since there's plastic yeah there's that other there's a joint hidden in there out of the package first of all let's just take a moment to appreciate the neutral stance that this rebel tech figure can achieve if you've been in the line for any amount of time and you've gotten some of the older figures especially the first ones they don't strike quite the neutral stance that you want them to they just look weird these figures are meant to be extreme posed so that's the wonky proportions that's the joints that can be seen that allows for more range of movement but lately, they've been showing that, hey, we can nail a neutral stance too. It may sacrifice a little range, but <laughs> it's an overall better figure, I feel. And before we get too far into it, and I forget about it because I always do, the stand, if you plug it in, it can hold the weight of the figure. So there is that. You get a little off center though, and it doesn't hold the weight of the figure. And you can always tighten those a little bit with the screws in here. But with all of that out of the way, just look at this thing. This is War Machine through and through. It's big, it's bulky, it conveys that there's a guy inside of it, but at the same time, it may not all be him. There's a lot built up on top of him. The sculpting is all nice and sharp. It has a little detail here and there to add to the mechanicalness, but there is some smooth spots and that allows the actual look of the plastic to shine through. It's a little bit metallic that may be a little bit of sparkle to it, but it does convey painted metal. There's some silver punched in in some spots just to break it all up. And even the back where it's usually full of holes and everything, because it's not organic, the holes don't stand out as much. It, it kind of blends into the overall motif of it. Even the pegs where I've pulled the guns off because <laughs> well, I'll get to that here in a second. They don't stand out as just pegs to plug stuff onto. Even the head, the same gun metal, the same silver, but the eyes are painted with white with kind of a pinkish reddish glow around it. And it, 
it helps achieve that lit look. But at the, well, I, I now call this an arc reactor and everything, but here it kind of stands out. It's almost too pinkish reddish. I feel like that should be kind of a deeper red. Give, make it, uh, I don't know, more military, more ominous, to fit in better with the overall darker color scheme. It being amazing Yabaguchi, it being Revel Tech, half the battle here is covering up the joints that get exposed when you move it. So things move that you wouldn't think move, like these pop up for... <laughs> Not a lot of reason, kind of get out of the way of the head mostly, but it also comes down and helps hide some of the moving parts there. We have this crazy slide here that we saw with Iron Man, and it's simulating a suit of armor and being flat metal parts. Being here or being here, it doesn't really stand out at you as awkward or out of place like it does on the organic figures. Out of the package though, one thing you notice probably, this ball joint at the shoulder. This is a constant struggle with Rebel Tech figures. To allow for the range of movement, it's gotta look like this, but there's some genius stuff going on here. You can bring the arm up, you can bring it over, you can bring it around, it goes all over the place. But the shoulder pad is on a dumbbell joint, so you can move it all around and get it close to covering up. Not quite so much when it's fully extended, but when it's down at the body, you can bring it down. But on top of that, there's a secondary hinge that allows you to bring it down to the arm itself. You get all around, you get it in place, you bring the shoulder pad around, then you extend it down. It does gap if you get too far, but you've got to really extend it. Extend down. It has the joint. It makes them look more bulkier. I love those things. This back of the arm thing that comes down and covers the hand, it's weird and it kind of gets in the way sometimes, but this is on a Revel Tech joint, so you can move it out of the way or you can just unplug the whole thing. So since we're about to go through articulation, I'm going to pull those off, but don't worry. They are marked left and right. And this is the part where people go, oh, you're grabbing about all this stuff, just fix it. I'm pointing out things that are odd. And when it comes to Revel Tech, there may be a lot of odd things, so bear with me. The head gets a nice range of movement, but there's an extension that you can bring up and for some reason, it makes it loosen up. I don't know what that is for exactly, but as soon as you kick it back down, it seems to tighten up. Extended, blah, 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 blah. So I don't know if that was on purpose or if I'm pulling it out of socket. I mean, with it up, you can get, well, no, not even there. If you push it down, you can still get the same amount of looking up. So I don't know. If you have older Amazing Yamaguchi figures, you know that they used to do a big old Revel Tech joint in the abdomen and then do an ab cover. Now they put a joint here and here, so it's much more solid. You get kind of the same range all the way around. It does seem to be a T-joint of some kind, so you can bring them up, but you can't really come much more forward than that unless I'm doing something wrong. The crotch piece floats, but I can't quite get it out of the way. It's running into something. It's the same going out. You can only go about that far, but like Carnage, <laughs> well, like I missed on Carnage completely, if you rotate it here, you can bring it up a little bit more. Knee pads come back around, if you remember on Iron Man, and they seem to go back and forth on these. When you bend the knee, you have this pointy sticking out. But if you bend War Machine's knee, the knee pad here is on a Revel Tech joint, so you can bring it up just a little bit. Not all the way, you can't close the gap completely, but it does help a little bit. And there's actually a hidden Revel Tech joint right here. I mean, there's a lot of hidden joints, but this one gives you just a little bit more movement. This is on a Revel Tech joint, of course, but this floaty piece, it's not jointed at all. It's actually a it's not softer plastic, but it's just pegged in between the foot and the shin. Not a bad thing. It still hides the gap, but allowing for full range of movement at the foot. Going over articulation, get ready to hear the word Revel Tech a lot. There's a joint at the base of the skull and then something down in the neck that's several pieces stuck together. Can look up, down. Oh, there's my tilt. Swivel. These are on a Revel Tech joint in the back, so you can bring them up side to side. And then at the torso, the shoulder goes forward and back. That comes out to a dumbbell joint of some kind. That's ball jointed into the bicep. Comes up, rotates around. There's also a shift that you can do there. Well, you can shift there, or you shift forward, shift back on top of that crazy moving piece right there. Talked about the shoulder pads. It's on a dumbbell joint right there. That's also two pieces that's hinged right on the front right there. No bicep swivel, but with all that up there, it's easy to simulate that. Revel Tech joint at the elbow comes up uh, oh well past 90 rubble tech joint at the wrist you can get that around move it wherever you want i've actually pulled here tried to take it apart see what's going on there it doesn't seem to want to come apart oh crunch arc back lots of tilt these stick out silver parts do like to run into the crotch piece though you can't get past it unless you pry it out and then get them down in there that allows for a little bit more crunch like i talked about the hips i don't know 
I may be doing something wrong here. And with an action figure like this, there's so much going on, I may miss something. So <laughs> let me know nicely, please. Back out. Actually, that's loosened up since I first messed with it. Am I, what am I doing here? There's a thigh swivel below that. It's diagonal, so when you turn it, it comes up. Revel Tech joint at the knee comes up. Not quite, but again, I talked about the extra joint at the shin. Boop, ah, kicks his ass. Knee pads on a tiny little Revel Tech joint. Ankle goes back, goes forward. Rocker on that Revel Tech joint. And then a toe joint comes up and kicks back, actually. For accessories, ooh, here we go. War Machine comes with two fists. He comes with two splayed out hands. And then he comes with two flat palm hands. Revel Tech joint, easy enough. Bop. Just comes right off. He comes with four of these guns. Two were on the figure in the package. Two were in the accessory tray. Look like little machine guns. The, no handles, of course, because they attach to the armor. The two pegs, the two holes. You just barely touch it, it's popping off. But with the added Revel Tech joints, you can plug them in. You can plug that in any hole you want. Even the hole that's left when you pull off the gauntlet fist covers. Because of the size and depth of that, when you plug it in, the ball joint actually goes down in there and... I kind of like that better. Quick draw. <laughs> Problem I run into there, when you pull it off, the joint likes to stay stuck down in there. And even with the tool, because it's sunk, it's a little bit harder to get out. It comes with four of these arm things. Right out of the box, it comes with the joint right here. And all the weapons have their own joints stuck in them. But I've noticed it's better to take the joint out of the weapon, put it here, and then put the weapon on this end. That way, when you plug it in, you get a lot more range for the weapon because it's up here and can go forward and back. So even if you decide to plug one of these in, you can come up with it. Comes with four of what I'm guessing are kind of missile launchers. Is that what those are? Comes with two holes on one side. It's pretty flat just the peg goes in. On the other, it's countersunk so you can sink the ball into it. And with that, you can stick them together, the ball disappears, and they look kind of seamless. Take that, mount it on the arm or plug or wherever you want to put it. There you go. You can't plug, you can't plug it into the hole that has the peg on it though because, well, the peg's already in there. Or there's even holes down here. You can plug it in and it's out of the way. Comes with four uh, Gatling guns, big heavy machine guns. Again, plugs onto this arm if you want it to go up and around and wherever you want it. With the extra joints, if you want to put it here, you can put it, well, anywhere you want. And then finally, as far as weapons go, these are probably my favorite. One, they're rockets, and two, they're painted white, so they stand out nicely against the armor. You can plug the joint in and then, you know, plug it into the hole. There's two holes and those line up nicely with the pegs on the back of the forearm. And those are actually tighter than the guns that came on it. So in my display, that's how that may end up. Quick draw rockets. And then there are six of these blasts. I dig the translucent plastic. It fades into an orange color. When there's light behind it, it, <laughs> it looks kind of nifty. Those can either plug into the bottom of the feet. And since they are angled, if you have the feet down like that, you can turn them and it looks more like it's blasting straight down. Or there's a hole in the hand where you can do the classic repulsor blast. Size-wise, War Machine stands at six and five-eighths inches tall. Here he is with the amazing Yamaguchi Iron Man and Captain America. Slightly taller than Tony, but definitely bulkier, just as it should be. And here it is with a couple of Marvel Legends War Machines. The cool thing about War Machine, all kinds of different sizes. You can make him bigger and it still fits into a six inch display. For giggles, here's the Mezco and SH Figure Arts Iron Mans. And then if you are wanting to fit this in a Marvel Legends display, the size is good, but because of the stylization of the Amazing Yamaguchi line, the head may be small, the hands are small, the feet are small. So while the size kind of fits, the proportions may not be to your liking. One thing I wanted to point out, some of the joints, whenever I plug them into the holes on the back, oops, they seem a little bit loose, loose enough to where when I put the weapon up, it wants to fall back down from either shaking it around or just the weight of itself drooping it. But each of these joints, they're bigger on one side than the other. So I've had a good amount of luck when they are loose. I flip them around or grab a different joint since there's so many of them and it seems tighter after that. And yes, it's compatible with all the Iron Man effects too. Same plugs, same company. <laughs> So at the end of the day, the name of the game here is fun. I know people have their problems with Amazing Yamaguchi and more specifically Revel Tech, but it seems like these last few releases, they've 
realize that. <laughs> Coyotes went, oh, well, it can be kind of a pain in the ass. Let's take some steps to kind of knock that back a bit. Don't get me wrong, it's still frustrating. There's still a learning curve, but once you get it, and once you work with it and you think, oh, well, you got to do this to do this to come around to here and you got to cover up this and you got to plug this in here and I can't do that until I do this, you end up with a damn impressive figure on your shelf. Not to mention all the options here. That started with Carnage, I believe. Well, Spider-Man had some webs. Deadpool had some guns. But man, with Carnage and Iron Man, there was just so many options and so many plugs. You can put stuff all over it in so many different configurations. Again, a frustration level, but... Ooh, once you get it all on there the way you want, even if it is a little bit crazy, you look at it and you think, oh my god, that is cool. And believe me, I've been messing with this for way too long. That's another intimidation point when it comes to my side of things, the reviewer's side. This is going to take a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but you know what? It's totally worth it. I may have put this off, but now I'm... <laughs> so happy I have it out. I have a few war machines, but I've never had one that I thought, oh, well, that's my main war machine. This is that figure. This is now my war machine. And if you remember, I've had my problems with this line in the past. So whenever I say I like this figure, you know what I mean. Because, oh, there's been some I do not like at all. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe, or whatever the platform you're watching this on allows. Much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. Wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the floosh.